Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me on Just Cook with Michael. Today I'm going to teach you how to make poached pears with a raspberry sauce. Pretty simple. I have two pears. I have about a cup and a half of raspberries. I made a thick, simple syrup. Usually when someone says simple syrup, it's equal parts sugar to water. That's just heated up in a pan until the sugar dissolves. A lot of times it's it's used to make cocktails that are cold because you want the granulated sugar to be fully dissolved. But in this case, it's going to help thicken the raspberry sauce. So I did two parts sugar to one part water. So in this mixture, I heated up two tablespoons of sugar and one tablespoon of water. So you can see it's fairly thick. So basically, it is going to be, because the sauce is going to be a cold sauce, it's going to be the, the sweetener and also the thickener for the raspberry sauce. So pretty simple. I'll peel the pears. I will cut them in half. I'll poach them for about 15 minutes. I'll put about a tablespoon of sugar in the water just to keep it flavored. I don't want the sugar being pulled from the pears. Okay, first part is peeling the pears. The, the water's already boiling. So I have a potato peeler here. I'm gonna see how this works. Looks like it's working pretty good. It's nice and sharp. And this, you know, sometimes when you peel things like potatoes that are gonna be mashed, something like that, you really don't care too much about aesthetics, but this is gonna be presented nicely. So you kind of want to be gentle with your peeling process. You know, you don't want deep gouges or leftover peels left all over the pear. So actually in this application, we want to have a pretty clean peel to it, kind of even, evenly cut throughout the pear. You want to try to take out if there's any brown spots, clear those out because again, this is going to be presented up to your to yourself or your guests, so you want it to look nice. And on this side, I have a little bit of browning, so I'll use my paring knife to cut away at that. Also at the top, we want to preserve the, the stem just because it makes a nice garnish. Gently, I'll cut away right to the stem, peel it right to the stem. Looks good. I'd like to expedite the process, I'll just show you one. So again, just slice right down the center of it, cut that stem right in half. You can't do this, no big deal, but I'm not even sure if I could do this, but I'm trying to line up the knife so it's, there it goes, perfect. So now I got two nice halves right down the middle of the stem. Sometimes you could use a melon baller to scoop out this middle, but I have this pretty sharp parry knife. I just want to get the core out and get this bottom part out. Usually I make a little bit of a V cut to get that bottom area out. Peel away at that and I'll try to even out the shape of the pear so it still doesn't appear to have a gouge in it. Try to trim that up. So this is going to go into pot of boiling water for about 15 minutes. You want to get a feel for how this pear feels when it's not cooked at all. So it's pretty firm. You definitely don't need to cook this to death. Probably even 10 minutes. So after about 10 minutes, I'll, I'll use this fork to stab the pear and see if it's nice and soft, but still, you know, I still like some resistance. Okay, I have my pears in the simmering water. That's about 180 degrees. You just need it to be at a really slight simmer. It doesn't need to boil. There's about a tablespoon of sugar in there. I don't, really don't want to make the pears any sweeter, but at the same time, I don't want, you know, I don't want the sugar kind of being pulled out of the pears into the, into the water. In 10 minutes, test it by poking it with a fork and see how well it's coming along. Okay, next we'll puree the raspberries to make the raspberry sauce. So I'm just going to dump those right in the food processor. Could, if you don't have a food processor, maybe use one of those hand mixers or try to put it inside a blender. Now I'm putting in about, probably about a quarter cup of that sugar mixture. Again, that was two tablespoons of sugar to one tablespoon of water. It's already looking pretty good. Probably one of the most important things I could tell you is always taste throughout the entire cooking process. It'll just make your food better, and it'll make you a much better cook chef. When I used to work in kitchens, I would have like a whole container of spoons right next to me the whole time I was cooking. And every single dish, before it went out, I would taste it and adjust. Really no other way to get around it. And then one of the main reasons for that, you know, when, when recipes say, or when you see chefs, oh, about a tablespoon of this or this much black pepper, is because sometimes there's a lot of variability. You know, a recipe might say a tablespoon of marjoram or a tablespoon of cinnamon, but different types of cinnamon might have different potencies. Depending on how old your cinnamon is, it could have a different potency to it. Whether you're using fresh ground black pepper or pepper that's already already been, you know, you bought it ground, 
that can make a difference. And then of course, just the matter of your taste, like what you want the, what it to be like. So always important to taste throughout. So sweetness, I would say that is there. One thing I did say at the beginning, but I'll do here. So I'm probably gonna put about a half shot of Grand Marnier in here, just to add some complexity. You could add some rum, brandy. Right, there we go. Again, I will taste this after I put in the alcohol. Because I'm gonna strain out the seeds, so I'll put it in a sieve and strain out the okay. seeds. I uh, pureed the raspberries with some of that thick, simple syrup. Now I'm gonna strain out the seeds, so I'll just dump this into the sieve here. This is fairly thick, so you're gonna to have to push it through the sieve, sauce through sauce without getting the seeds. seeds. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Maybe about half of it's come through now. You really have to work in the puree into the sieve to, to get every last good part of the raspberry sauce out. And then on the bottom of the sieve, you know, it's going to be stuck to the bottom. Make sure you scrape off the excess into the bowl. I used to make wine. Just seeing the seeds in here reminds me of uh, what we would call the cake when you press the grapes. And when you have all the skins and seeds left over, it's thick and pulpy like this and almost has that same look. So it's just about, just about squeezed out all the juice I can. Okay, now the seeds have been completely taken out. And it's just a nice sauce that's going to that's gonna go on the base of the plate. Four to six servings of pears. If you have any left over, it makes a great addition to a cocktail. It's been about 10 minutes. going to poke it, see what it feels like. It's definitely softer. That's pretty close there. Because again, this is going to continue to cook. So it's been about 10 minutes. At the most, I'm going to go another five. And this next step, we're going to fan the pears. And again, you can make these a day ahead of time. It's probably best to serve them room temperature. You'll want a pretty thin, sharp paring knife for this. And basically, you're going to already, your first cuts will be at a 45 degree angle. That way, it'll just fan out nicely. So probably about a half inch from the top and about a quarter inch thick and a 45 degree angle. Each cut will be coming down about a quarter inch. But still maintain that 45 degree angle. And you want to make sure, to go, you know, take your time and go through the whole pair that way when you press it, you can see how nicely that fans out and it's holding up nicely. Sometimes if you overcook them, they'll be softer. And so that's a nice looking pear there. Where the sauce is going to go on the bottom with the pear on top. And you can see it's a beautiful presentation. Next, we'll plate up the dish. So I have the raspberry sauce here. You could put this in like a measuring cup that has a spout on it to pour it. Or carefully, some, sometimes in pastry kitchens, they'll put it in squeeze bottles to either make designs with this. Slide the pear right on there. And voila, I reserved some raspberries so you can keep those, use them as garnish to put around the dish. Now you can make poached pears in a raspberry sauce also. Thanks for joining me on Just Cook with Michael.